welcome inside Halton Arena on this Saturday afternoon for Conference USA Basketball as the Western Kentucky Lady Toppers make their way here to Halton Arena to take on the Charlotte 49ers. Bobby Rosensky alongside Molly Cotton and Hannah Brady. And Molly, as we get set here for tip in just a minute, right now teams going in two different directions. The Lady Toppers, they're on a nice winning streak of late as they've won five in a row. Charlotte 49ers, meanwhile, have dropped three straight. And, and did a defining moment you almost feel like for the Charlotte 49ers on a three game losing streak. This is a position that this program is not used to finding themselves in especially as of late as the reigning Conference USA champs. But Western Kentucky everything going right at this point. They've been shooting the ball really well which has led to this five game winning streak. Yeah, Lady Toppers nine and eight overall on the season but with this win streak in Conference USA have vaulted up to second place at six in a two. Meanwhile, right now the 49ers sitting at five in three. The Niners inside Halton Arena are five and three here at home, while the Lady Toppers four in five on the road. And for Charlotte, it, you come off a, a tough loss Thursday night. This is a 49ers team who competed against the best team in the conference in Middle Tennessee, but now you're taking on that second place team in Western Kentucky, who is similar in the fact that they have a lot of good players, a lot of talent that can do a lot of good things. This is the 30th meeting all time. The Lady Toppers lead it overall 22 to seven. Charlotte did win both meetings a year ago including the last time they played 89 43 the lady toppers in that game shot just 12 of 58 from the field nearly over 20 percent and for the 49ers a start similar molly to what we saw on thursday and that's a turnover it does it gives you negative flashbacks if you're 49ers fans uh, considering what we saw in holton arena on thursday night against middle tennessee and a lot of it is just the controllable turnovers Angel Lawrence drives inside. Nice defense. Led to no foul. And now the second possession here for the Lady Toppers. You saw them shoot a three on the first trip. They do take the most threes in Conference USA per game at 28. Now we saw Middle Tennessee here on Thursday. I think they were just below that with 27. And they were firing them up left and right on Thursday. I think a positive for this 49ers team and Karen Consuegra would agree is the defense that you got Thursday. Meredith 0 for 2 from beyond the arc early on, but an offensive rebound gives another opportunity and another offensive rebound. This is a team that is stood at the top of the country or ranked in the country with offensive rebounds, 13 and a half offensive rebounds per game. Very good at giving themselves multiple chances on offense. So Jalen Foster just a minute and a half in already has three rebounds and there's the first bucket of the game. Alexis Mead, the sophomore. Last year on the all freshman team for Conference USA. Last time we saw the 49ers, you saw Lawrence go down to Maya McGraw. And again, we saw a lot of missed opportunities, a lot of turnovers just with that specific pass and trying to force it to Maya McGraw. But opposing teams are really focusing in on McGraw because she has been a player that has stepped up so much for the 49ers. McGraw able to save this possession. Lawrence will fire the three, and it's good. Deja Lawrence from beyond the arc. She's been the leading scorer in the last five games for the 49ers, and she gives them their first lead of the evening. Obviously such an integral part of this 49ers team on both ends, but th what's tricky is for Charlotte, you're trying to find more options offensively. Hayes going inside, left hand, and the finish. The freshman from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, double figures in five straight games. And she puts the Lady Toppers back in front. And that's what Hayes does so well. That's part of her game, the dribble drive. She's great at finishing at the rim. Lawrence finds an open Rembert and Charlotte back in front. Huge there for Charlotte. Look, we talked to Maya McGraw. She's going to get a lot of attention on defense, but that will open things up. And Rembert taking advantage, and she gets it to go. Foster will fire a three, and it's good. Just 24% from beyond the arc this season, but Foster three points, three rebounds in three minutes. Run 
Bird able to finish inside, and Molly, that was something we saw this team struggle to do on Thursday. Had good looks, just not able to finish against the Lady Raiders. And Rimber going up with a lot of aggression and a lot of physicality, and if you get her going, then it's going to force Western Kentucky to change up the defense a little bit and play more on defense on her, which will lead to Maya McGraw being open. Jada McMillan. Had to get in a tight window to McGraw. Leads to the second turnover and a great pass up and an even better finish by Hayes. And a team like this, first of all, that is so good and active on defense. They're going to, uh, they have those active hands. They're going to get in your face, as you've, you've seen here, of Western Kentucky on defense. Another turnover. Hayes not able to finish that time. Nice defense by Busick. Lawrence finds Rembert again. And that's what this team does really well. That's where you want to get out. Speed and transition leading to that offense. And you can't say enough right now about Rembert and the importance of the start to this game. And she's been a player, I think, slowly but surely coming along with this 49ers team. Rembert six points here early on was just one of seven from the floor in the loss on Thursday. Hayes going inside. Great defense. Oh, a long two won't go. Busick the board. The shot there from Pitts. Busick to Rembert. Finds a cutting McGraw. And it will go out of bounds off Maya. And it will be Lady Topper basketball. And for Charlotte, I liked everything that happened there. It's just obviously for Maya McGraw uh, finishing at the rim. There you see number 13, Tracy Houston checking into the game. She had missed four straight until playing on Thursday against the Lady Raiders. Had a season high seven rebounds in that game, four on the offensive side. And I know Coach Consuegra said she had just one practice leading into that game on Thursday as she worked her way back healthy. And working around Foster, nice pump fake driving past Houston. And we'll draw some contact and we'll lead to our first free throws of the day. And that will happen on the other side of the timeout. Five minutes in, back and forth early on. We're tied at nine here in Charlotte. Deja Lawrence, an early three, and also this perfect assist to Kiana Rembert. Rembert, six points early on, three for three from the floor as we are tied at nine here in the first quarter. Bobby Rosensky, Molly Cotton, and now let's talk to the third member of our team. That's Hannah Brady. Hannah? Thanks, Bobby. Charlotte is returning home for the second time this week and are hoping to spark some offensive momentum after a loss against MTSU. Charlotte has sustained several injuries so far this season, but that has prevented them from having some offensive momentum down the stretch. Head coach Kara Consuegra has emphasized that it's never about effort for her players. It's more so about those mental mistakes. The Lady Toppers coming off of their fifth consecutive win have two main focuses coming into tonight's game, and that is going to be locking down those threes and playing hard on defense. So the key for the Knights tonight is going to maintain that good ball movement and just playing good mentally, guys. Thank you, Hannah. And look at Charlotte on the season. Shooting 39.5%. That is 10th out of 11 in Conference USA. But Miley, early start here, four of six from the floor. Yeah, and you talk about just that mentality. This is a team that's inexperienced, right? And the injuries that you've tried to work through, consistency is a big term for the Charlotte 49ers uh, this season, or maybe lack thereof at this point. But inexperience, I think, has led to a lot of mistakes, a lot of turnovers from what we've seen for the Charlotte 49ers. So this is a team that's got to get a little bit more rhythm and confidence going with some good performances despite a three-game losing streak. Niners have made four out of their last five shots. Foster coming in, trying to just take it away from Davis. Davis able to maintain possession, and now Wade gets an open three. Long rebound will on the hands of Hayes. Hayes four points early on for the freshman. Hayes pass gets at the feet of Foster. Now throws it out, Meredith will step in. Back in the hands of Foster. And now the point guard, Meade. Started every game as a freshman last year at point. Can't get the shot to go, Busick the rebound. 
And Jacare Consuegra wants the Charlotte team to play really fast from three-point line to three-point line, but then you slow down, you read the defense, and you adjust. And that, again, comes back to the inexperience of this team. You, you need quicker or more of those in-game adjustments from this team throughout these four quarters. Rembert, and it's going to lead to a turnover as that possession never really got any rhythm for the 49ers. And now the pass down low, and Hayes not able to finish that time. Meade had found Hayes all alone underneath. And honestly, Busick bailing this team out there with that uh, rebound. I think that was a major play there for J.C. Busick because I think you look at that and just kind of look at Charlotte. Like you got to get back on defense faster. You got to play a little tougher. Rembert steps in, jump shot, and that one doesn't fall. Her first miss of the day. As the Niners have been stuck on nine points, pushing on three minutes. Foster. Hands of Meredith. Now Galvin in the game for the Lady Toppers, a freshman from Louisville, Kentucky, and it's going to be a turnover. Davis has it for Charlotte. The similar situation. And Busick, open look on the feed from McMillan. And the Niners back in front. I was going to say, similar situation for Charlotte, maybe of what we saw Thursday of struggling offensively, but I think doing really well defensively. And then you have J.C. Busick coming in with the three to give Charlotte the lead. And we saw that on Thursday of Busick with a couple of threes, a significant threes in that game. Foul called on Busick. Coach Consuegra not happy. Letting referee Travis Jones hear about it. Travis Jones, Troy Winders, and Carla Roberts Jeter, our officiating crew. Maya McGraw checking back into the game. A three inning, a drought for Charlotte. Lady Toppers on a drought of their own. That's over two and a half minutes. They've missed their last four shots. Currently WKU 4 of 12 from the floor. That 4 of 13, but an offensive board. And another possession. Faustino, as they work it around, now Blevins. Back to Faustino, she'll fire the three. Another offensive board, their fourth of this first quarter. And for Charlotte, that again goes back to the in-game adjustments, right? With less than two minutes to play in this first quarter, how do you respond now? How do you adjust from this first quarter to the second quarter, or even in this possession right now, of tighten up and come away with the rebound? Savori's going to have to fire left hand. He's to a long rebound. Maya McGraw has it. And a nice outlet pass, Deja Lawrence, but she lost control of the ball, and it's taken away by Foster. It's not often you see that, especially from Deja Lawrence. But again, this Western Kentucky team averaging 11.9 steals per game. That's 10th in the country. Active on defense, or guards especially have really active hands. Feet inside, Foster left hand. Foul going to be called on the 49ers, which will allow Jalen Foster to head back to the stripe. This is a deep lady toppers team. You look at the scoring, just one player averaging double figures coming into this game. That's the freshman Hayes. But a bunch of players able to help out. Meanwhile, you look at Kara Consuegra and her team. It's led by Deja Lawrence at 15.8 points. You got Jada McMillan at 11.6. And as of late, you've kind of look at Maya McGraw, JC Busick. And referee's going to check something at the monitor. I'm not sure. I know Kara Consuegra was yelling, I guess I could say, kind of back and forth <laughs> with the officials. I think trying to get more of an explanation. Obviously not pleased with that as the officials will go to the monitor. But you talk Western Kentucky, Bobby, and how deep this team is. First of all, you've got uh, WKU has eight different leading scorers for this team. So again, like you say, plenty of options. See the replay there. Not exactly sure, and I'm told they're looking to see who the foul was exactly on. Because I know Kara Consuegra, she was yelling three, three, so I think, I don't know if she wanted it called on Davis versus Maya McGraw. Uh, that would have been Maya McGraw's first foul of the game. And it is on Davis, her first as well. McGraw, a 
key piece here for Charlotte if they hope to pick up a win. This is a three-game homestand for the 49ers. Coming up on a Thursday night. The Niners will welcome Rice to town. Foster able to hit both that time. And puts the Lady Toppers here all even with the 49ers. Charlotte shooting 56% from the field. Problem is the five turnovers, limiting their shot attempts. Davis three. Great ball movement there offensively for Charlotte. It's hard to argue kind of what he had set up. Just couldn't get that three to go from Davis. And when you want a three, uh, Davis is the player to look for. Betancourt. The ball back, she'll fire the long two. And the rebound to Davis. Just three seconds, different shot clock to game clock. Get where you slow it down, read that defense, get yourself a good shot. Rembert, gets it to Lawrence. Nice pass, Davis. Go inside, McGraw can't get the and one, but Maya McGraw will head to the free throw line for the 49ers here. And a chance to grab the lead late in this first quarter. And huge there, I mean, we talked to Maya McGraw and the defense, how they're really honing in on her, whether it's Western Kentucky or anybody at this point in these conference matchups. But when you have that ball movement, then you open up the defense, you open up some more opportunities for the Charlotte 49ers offense to find Maya McGraw, and that's exactly what they did. One out of two for McGraw, seven seconds. Faustino trying to beat the double team trap. Good ball movement, finds an open look, and the shot does not fall. Savori had the chance at the buzzer to try to give the Lady Toppers the lead. First quarter in the books here from Charlotte, North Carolina. It's the 49ers leading by one. for the start of the second quarter as you look at Lady Topper head coach Greg Collins in his fifth season but been there a long time as he's been on the staff since 2012. Overall 76 in 58 leading the Lady Toppers. That shot doesn't fall. Western Kentucky at just 23.5 percent from the floor in the first quarter. And that's not something that you, first of all, expect to begin with, but you can continue to expect for Western Kentucky. Maya McGraw able to finish inside. <laughs> Meanwhile, Charlotte shooting 50% from the floor. McGraw shooting 50% on the season, but just two of 14 over the past two games. Three point lead is the largest of the game so far for the 49ers. That shot blocked away. Faustino going to drive baseline, and that shot blocked away as well. And now an and one. Betancourt able to get the bucket to go. It was a great job from Rembrandt on those two blocks, getting a piece of it and staying strong. Again, a player that we've mentioned quite a bit here uh, in the game. And Maya McGraw now heading to the bench where Houston is coming in. And a player who you mentioned, Bobby, on Thursday night, despite not a lot of action because of an injury here as of late, she got some minutes Thursday and had an impact on rebounding the basketball. And the free throw good for Betancourt, the junior from Venezuela, averaging 2.4 points a game. That average will go up as she's already got three, thanks to that and one. Dangerous pass, almost deflected by Galvin. Pass inside, Houston. 
And a travel call on Tracy Houston. She was put in a pretty difficult spot there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what that, that Western Kentucky defense does. But you saw four red jerseys, it felt like, uh, around Houston as she was that pass went right through traffic to her, and it was tough for her to do anything with. Talk about this depth of the Lady Toppers, 11 players in the first quarter. And there's a three from deep. Hope Savori from beyond the arc. Shooting 36.5% from the outside this season. Deja Lawrence and a foul call is going to send Deja to the line for two. For Western Kentucky, you talk, this is a bench that's been crucial this season. The reserves are scoring 29 points per game. So again, and for the Lady Toppers, it's just a lot of talent in a lot of different areas. Where Charlotte, you feel like they're so close. So Consuegra has said that same thing about this team and reminding this young team that they really are not that far away from winning a lot of these games in Conference USA. Lawrence. Really good at the line, 80%. Did not hit that one. Right now it's a 6-0 run for the Lady Toppers that Lawrence puts an end to. This game has been a one-possession game the entire time. Lady Toppers a chance to change that here on this possession. Savori going to drive inside on Rembert. Able to get her own rebound. Now a three doesn't fall. Bostino, the offensive board, draws a foul, and it leads to some yelling from Carrick and Suegra as the offensive rebounds piling up here. That is seven right now for the Lady Toppers. And for Charlotte, it's back to the, the fundamentals of basketball, right? We, we talked the inexperience, the youth of this team, all of that for Charlotte, but with the, those rebounds, it's boxing out, right? And that's exactly what Kara Consuegra is yelling at her team from the sidelines. It, it, she is frustrated because, because it's tough. It feels like that's the easy answer for this team. Now it's just about focusing in on those details and executing it. Castino yeah. misses both. What an offensive rebound. Now the foot of Foster landed out of bounds, so it will be a turnover to the 49ers. Austino, a 60% free throw shooter on the season, not able to capitalize. Tight defense by Galvin on Lawrence, but Lawrence able to get all the way to the bucket. That's just a great basketball play there from Lawrence, and she outworked there. Felt the entire Western Kentucky defense on that. Mead back in, running the point. Now Meredith. It's a long two, and it's good. Foot was on the line. But Maya Meredith, 2022 Conference USA Freshman of the Year. Worked her way back from a torn ACL. Here's a steal and a bucket for Galvin. And a timeout taken by Carrick and Suegra. A quick 4-0 run. And the Lady Toppers have grabbed the first two-possession lead of the day here in Charlotte. 7.09 to go in this second quarter. Coach Carrick and Swagra taking that timeout. Not happy with another turnover as we've seen seven uh, for the 49ers. Coach Consuegra in her 12th year leading the 49ers. As you see, the all-time winningest coach in Charlotte history. 204 wins for Coach Consuegra. And last year, regular season and a tournament. Conference USA Championships. Niners were picked third in the preseason poll. Obviously, Michaela Boykin going down with an injury has kind of changed things here as this 49er team looks to find where they get more offense as Boykin, along with Deja Lawrence, the top two scorers when the injury occurred back in late November. Another turnover. And that's unlike Deja Lawrence. And it got forced and not a great pass from Deja Lawrence cross court and right into the hands of Western Kentucky. They're working around. Meade's got an open three. It's going to be short, but guess what? Offensive rebound. Now not able to finish underneath was Meredith. And Busick got the rebound. And now foul called on Galvin. Busick with five rebounds. 
and she's been really active on defense. Look, she's not gonna go out and score you 20 points a game, which Charlotte needs more offense, as we've talked about here in this of uh, these opening minutes so far, but think the 49er way and buying into the program, that's what JC Busick does. And I think she's really had a strong couple of performances for the 49ers despite this losing streak. And a season high 10 rebounds on Thursday against Middle Tennessee. A little spin move inside, shot doesn't fall for Rembert, who had six points in the first quarter. And Wade checking back in for Charlotte. And Swigger has been pleased with her. She's gotten more minutes here these past couple of times out. Eight minutes on Thursday. And Swigger felt like she was a positive in that loss to Middle Tennessee. Bostino out to Meredith. Eight to shoot. Now Foster backing in on Rembert. Off the glass doesn't fall. Rembert the rebound. And now here comes Wade. And slow it down for Charlotte so you're not forced into to making those mistakes and that's what we see them do now slow it down a bit to read that defense and wait unfortunately just stopping her dribble and a travel gonna be called which will lead to turnover number nine first to eight turnovers have led to nine points lady toppers with two turnovers have actually led to five for Charlotte that is a four-point differential, and you see the four-point lead for WKU. Well, there'll be turnover number three as Meade's pass ended up in no man's land. And as frustrated as we've seen and passionate as we've seen, Kara Consuegra with her team in these timeouts and in these moments, it, there's obviously strategy behind that, right? I mean, you, you're only down by four points, but this is also a Western Kentucky team with the way they shoot the basketball, they can extend that quickly. So keeping Charlotte motivated, keeping Charlotte in it, which they've done defensively here so far. McMillan, nice pass, McGraw inside. Maya McGraw, second bucket, Niners back within two. Foster in the hands of Faustino, driving baseline, throws it back out. Allen in the hands of Meade, Allen's first minutes of the game. Meade's got the open three. And Wade with a nice rebound, going to draw the foul on Faustino. And again, another great defensive stop there for Charlotte. And what's been tricky is the offensive rebounds. As we already know for Western Kentucky is Charlotte's had really good defense, but then they give the, the Lady Toppers more of a chance. So we see there Maya McGraw having her impact offensively. Niners right now shooting 57% from the field. Lady Toppers at 28%. Each team has made eight shots. Difference is the Lady Toppers have taken 15 more. It's in part to nine offensive rebounds. Charlotte with zero so far. And they try to get it in again to McGraw, knocked out of bounds. Well, the Lady Toppers. And Jada not wasting any time. As soon as she touched that basketball, it almost seemed like she went kind of over her shoulder with her back still facing the center of the quarter, at least as she's turning to find Maya McGraw. And McMillan's got an open Wade. And that three doesn't fall. Coach Consuegra can't believe a foul was not called by referee Travis Jones. Niners have attempted four free throws so far today. UKU with seven attempts. And this is going to be a turnover as it went off the leg of Hayes. Like a little contact was there on the arm on the follow through. And if you're a believer, ball don't lie. And Charlotte gets it back here. Again, trying to get it inside to McGraw. He's knocked out of bounds. Well, Hayes turned around, might have had a steal there. 
Here's Rembert. And this pass high for Davis. Possession that's all been out of whack so far. And Wade just got the shot off, doesn't fall. And for Maya McGraw, I'd like to see her box out a little bit better on that rebound to come away with an offensive board for Charlotte. I feel like she was a bit too comfortable, too, too off that block down low. Hayes heads back to the bench. You see Faustino check back in. Karen Consuegra just telling Jada McMillan to be aggressive. And I think that's what this kind of theme is, this tone is for Charlotte. This is a team for Charlotte. They can wear you down. Middle Tennessee knew that on Thursday night when they came in here uh, to Holton Arena because it's a scrappy, aggressive, kind of wear you down team. Now, Western Kentucky also in a similar sense, a wear you down kind of team. So it'll be interesting to see where we are towards the end of this game. Davis open three and it's good and the Niners back in in front. 3rd made three for the 49ers. They're three of six from beyond the arc. And Lady Toppers come in, shooting the most threes in Conference USA. They've taken 11 today. And right now, Coach Collins' team has made just two as the Niners on a 5-0 run and another turnover by Western Kentucky. And that's good 49er basketball right there. Davis three on the other end, you're able to force a turnover where defensively this team is coming along. They've gotten really solid and really strong. We talked Thursday night, and I think so far here, you've got to be pleased for Charlotte. They're all looking for someone to get the ball to, finally in the hands of Rembert. Now Deja Lawrence. Rembert, free throw line, jumper is good. Deanna Rembert with eight points. And the 49ers here on a 7-0 run over the last 245. And a great pass from Deja Lawrence to set that up, and I love the decision by Rembert. There wasn't any thought. She went for it. She was confident in that shot right at the charity stripe, and she finishes. Toppers working it around the perimeter. Now we'll get a three from Meredith. Davis the rebound. And Rimber playing with a lot of confidence right now for the 49ers. I think you continue to get her involved for Charlotte. She's got the ball, fakes the three, drives in, runner in and out. Faustino. Her high 17 points two games ago against FAU. Played just six and a half minutes, though, last time out. And a foul on the 49ers. And he's going to send Foster back to the free throw line. Foster, a six foot sophomore from Austin, Texas. Double figures last two games for Coach Collins. And I love this play right here for Jada McMillan. We just talked about how Consuegra told her to be aggressive, and that's exactly what she was doing defensively there against WKU. Foster now four out of five at the line. Connolly sinks them both. So a one-point game is we get set to enter the Final minute of this first half. And if you're back Charlotte, and forth throughout. you have a sense of urgency, but you're not forcing anything right now here in these final couple of plays. They get it inside. McGraw not able to finish. And the foul going to be on Wade, her first. In my McGraw absolutely has to finish that, right? We, this team has been trying to find her, looking for her down, down low beneath the basket, and she has struggled finishing these past couple of games, and that's a shot that she just can't miss for this 49ers team, who we know needs that extra piece of offense, and, and she can be that for Charlotte. McGraw two for four today. It was two for 14 over the last two games. The toppers had an opportunity for a two for one. Looks like that's going to go away here. Move inside. Foster doesn't fall. They do get the rebound. 
20 put back on the clock. Quick shot taken and good from beyond the arc by Meredith. Her first three of the day. It has Western Kentucky back up. Final look here for the 49ers. Jada McMillan trying to back in on Faustino. Throws up the shot. Doesn't fall. Out of bounds. And that will take us to the end of the first half here in Halton Arena. A back and forth. First two quarters, and right now it's the Lady Toppers on top by two. Getting you ready for the third quarter from Halton Arena. Western Kentucky on top of the Charlotte 49ers, 27 the 25, Bobby Rosensky, Molly Cotton with you. And let's check back in with Hannah Brady. Hannah. Thanks, Bobby. The Niners down by two. There was a lot of frustration over here on the Charlotte sideline as head coach Kara Consuegra was telling her players, I don't know what to tell you. You need to box out. You can't turn over the ball. It's all about playing hard today. And head coach Kara Consuegra, that's one thing she was talking about with her teammates. She said, I need you guys to play hard, play, str play strong. And so it's really all about that for the these Niners today to get some momentum coming back in the second half. Thanks, Hannah. And uh, there was twice, Molly, I think after timeouts, uh, whether media or Coach Consuegra, one I think was about offensive rebounding, another was about turnovers, and they gave up both. That happened each time after those conversations. So you can get the frustration there that Hannah was talking about. Right, and for Charlotte, controlling what you can control, right? I think that's got to be the tone here for the 49ers. We talked about that Thursday against Middle Tennessee in those turnovers. And again, you can't have those silly turnovers that lead to Western Kentucky points or any Western Kentucky opportunities and controlling what you can control boxing out playing disciplined basketball this is what you need to focus on in this second half to give yourselves a chance and to snap this three game losing streak and you can do that today against Western Kentucky Lady Toppers do have the two point lead they come in averaging 29.1 points per game from their bench through 17 games this season. So far in that first half, just eight bench points. And you look to a player, I do at least, for to Jada McMillan, to the J.C. Busicks, to really kind of turn it up a notch and lead this team in this second half, knowing that, again, the three-game losing streak this program isn't used to. But you need those players to set the tone for those younger players on this 49ers team. Yeah, we've got a three-second call on the 49ers. Ada McMillan did play that entire first half for Charlotte. Took just one shot and did not make that one. Did have three assists. And you talk frustrations, that's a, another moment where you're frustrated as a head coach. You come out out of halftime. We talked of making those in-game adjustments and making them quickly, right? Controlling what you can control, not having those mistakes. And you give the basketball away, right? In that first possession coming out of the locker room. Hayes hits the ground hard on a foul from Rembert. But Hayes will get an opportunity here at the free throw line. Averaging 10.8 points per game. Leading this Lady Topper squad. She's got sisters that play college basketball in Mississippi State. An impressive freshman season for Hayes for Western Kentucky. At a high of 31 points already this season in a road game in San Antonio. And she's the team's most efficient three-point shooter, so I had that to her resume, making 40% of her shots from three-point range. And you see the hands go up to the head again of Carrick and Swagger. Not uh, technically an offensive rebound, but the ball going off. Charlotte, nice trap in the corner. Now Deja Lawrence able to take it away. Beat inside McGraw, and McGraw can't finish. Like it went out off Lawrence, and they do make the correct call. 
Even Lauren says, yeah, that, that was on me. You can tell her, her and Maya McGraw were just kind of casually walking back to get ready for defense, knowing that it went off of Lawrence. So the nice trap in the corner, and Deja Lawrence ended up being the third one over there to get the turnover. So as we were talking about, Maya McGraw's got the looks. It's not hitting them right now. Now a foul on McGraw on the defensive side. And she looked shocked at the official getting called on that file. But we, we talk about Maya McGraw, and yeah, it's just unfortunate right now. Those shots aren't falling. Uh, you're just on a stretch at this point for Maya McGraw. But as much as this team has had to adjust to different roles, I think Maya McGraw has really had to because she came up on, and it, you almost feel like, okay, she's going to be part of the big three, right, for Charlotte, from Jada McMillan and Deja Lawrence. And then Maya McGraw can give me that next player to, to bring some offense. Well, defenses are paying attention to her now and now it's an extra adjustment that she's had to make and she has to adjust for this 49ers team and there is another offensive rebound and it's Pitts able to finish it off give credit to Meade she didn't get the offensive board but she got her hand on that ball which kept it alive Deja Lawrence able to answer back Deja up to eight points only attempted four shots and there's a ball behind the back Foster's somehow able to get it to Meade, and Coach Collins not liking what he's seeing right there. Takes a timeout to reset the offense. Early here in the third quarter, Lady Toppers have extended their lead to three here in the third. Eight oh four to go in this third quarter after that timeout taken. By head coach Greg Collins of the Lady Toppers. Let's check back in with Hannah. Guys, Greg Collins was telling his players, he said, you know, you're only up by three, but you still have to play hard. He said, you need good ball movement. You need to control the ball. You got to communicate with one another. I need to see more out of you during this next second half, guys. Thank you, Hannah. Open three in the corner, doesn't go. This will surprise no one. Offensive rebound, great pass. Lady Topper still have it. Now Hayes open three. Another offensive rebound and a foul on Deja Lawrence. And we're getting ready for the amount of players Charlotte has as close to a hockey line change you can get for new players getting ready to check in. And um, I think we were talking about this the other day. You don't see Kara sit on the bench too much. And she is sitting down right now. Yeah, and this is a coach where you're trying to navigate, right, of how much you, you're you going to be involved, right? You're still coaching in a very, very good coach in Kara Consuegra. But now what do you do as this head coach? Because you want players to respond. And it comes down to them stepping up and them executing and making these plays. It was three offensive rebounds on that trip. Maybe Toppers still have a hard time buying a bucket, though, as they are just 26% for the game. There's Foster working in on Houston, and she'll get the finish with the left hand off the glass. And it does feel with the, the change that you saw, if you're not going to make these plays, we're, we're going to find others that will for the 49ers. And there's a time where we saw this team have almost nearly 30 turnovers against an FAU team just a few weeks ago. Kara Consuegra was saying, hey, we looked at every single one of those turnovers on film. You feel like it's a similar situation with offensive rebounds for Western Kentucky in today's game. Nia Young, who checked in, has her pass intercepted. Meade leading the way for the Lady Toppers. This five-point lead is the largest lead of the game. Foster able to get past Houston. Couldn't finish at the rim. And this is the moment, right? We talk about Kara Consuegra and her, her coaching, how she wants to lead this team, how she wants to coach this team. And she has reiterated to her players, you're so close, you are not far away. I mean, this is now after that Nia Young jumper, you're three points away. It's a, you're staying in these games. It's about those details. It's about now just finishing and correcting those mistakes, those turnovers, the offensive rebounds, making those in-game adjustments to give yourselves a chance to win this game. And now Wade the steal. Can't get the finish. 
But Alicia Wade will head to the line now for two. As the young players, Wade and Young, uh, to provide a little spark. And I like what Wade has given this team here as of late now on in this game against Western Kentucky, especially. And uh, you, with the young players, you want them to, to gain the confidence. I, I see Wade kind of developing which with each and every game in these small plays and these small moments. They are adding up, I think, a lot to her development of this game, of her game. They throw good from Wade has struggled at the line overall this season. That free throw. Makes her 13 of 24, and she's able to calmly sink them both. And the 49ers have cut it to one. Quickly up, Hayes, three in and out. Offensive rebound, and now Young with the block against Faustino. There you go, if you can't come away with the rebound, come away with the block. That'll get the team at least a little bit of momentum. Lady Toppers have more offensive rebounds than Charlotte has total rebounds in the game, 15 to 14. Three doesn't go, and it's Busick getting the rebound, and now foul going to be called on Hayes. And I mentioned earlier, J.C. Busick is a player you look to, Jada McMillan as well, who's not out there on the court right now for the 49ers, making those plays, having those intangibles where the rest of the team is feeding off of it, right? And that type of fight, that type of play by J.C. Busick, that's exactly what I mean, kind of leading by example for this 49ers team. And now, hopefully, carrying some momentum here with this offensive possession. And Davis hits from beyond the arc. It's a 7 0 run, and the Niners back in front. Second three for Davis. Close to a turnover. Lady Toppers able to keep it. The ball in the hands of their freshman. Hayes going inside. Faustino, 10 to shoot. Faustino. And that shot blocked away. Young with the finish. It's a 9-0 run. And Holton Arena is uncontrollable right now with the excitement. And a timeout taken again by Coach Collins. It's the Young Guns sparking the run for the Niners. The Charlotte 49ers on a 9-0 run. Tamiya Davis with three of those nine points. And we go back, Molly, to the hockey line yeah. change. It was 32-27, 9-0 run since that point in time. Which just shows how good of a coach Kara Consuegra is, and honestly, the chess match that it is uh, coaching between these two with Western Kentucky and Charlotte. And you talk this 9-0 run, a four-point lead, 36-32, over the Lady Toppers. They're doing it without the Deja Lawrence and Jada McMillans. And had you said that weeks ago, you think, I don't know how 49ers could pull that off. Well, the 9-0 run ends there. Perfect ball movement by the Lady Toppers, and now a steal. And it's going to be a foul on Wade. And Savori was hit. As you see there, like the nose. And it's just those those moments from Wade where she has a really good game. She can be a really good playmaker and give you a lot of momentum if you're Charlotte. But then there's those moments of she's already turning her head to look downhill, down court, where she barely has control of the basketball, leading to that, that turnover there for Western Kentucky. Referee Troy Winders making sure Hope is all right. And we resume action here with a two-point Charlotte lead. And long rebound in the hands of Busick. And if I'm Charlotte, all I know is whatever happens in this game, I'm not giving up another offensive rebound to Western Kentucky. Is, this is a team that cannot buy a shot right now. It is 16 offensive rebounds. And now a travel on Young. 
Now 16 offensive rebounds, 10 second chance points. But it could be a lot worse. As Molly mentioned, the Lady Toppers shooting here at just 26%. Uh, they do come in as the last place shooting team in Conference USA. Charlotte just in front of them at number 10, even though they are shooting 54%. Molly said no more offensive rebounds. That lasted about 20 seconds there. There's an open three. And Houston able to get the rebound. And another steal. Faustino gets the pass off. Foster and one. Man, brutal there for Charlotte and for Houston. I mean, I have no problem going in aggressively with that foul. Not surprised by that. But Kara Consuegra now talking to Wade. It's just about slowing it down, right? I mean, it goes back to what I said earlier about playing fast between the three-point line to three-point line, but then slowing it down to read the defense. And that's just what Wade needs to do is slow things down for herself right now. Jada McMillan will check back in as Wade heads to the bench. Three turnovers in the last minute and a half here for Charlotte. Actually, they made their last four shots. They just haven't been able to attempt one here. Since that timeout by Greg Collins. McMillan now looking for help. Gets it from Davis, and she's tripped up. Yeah, so what I said, you're not allowing another offensive rebound. It's also, well, you're not having another turnover. Another issue for the Charlotte 49ers, and really not just against Western Kentucky. is an obvious foul there against the Lady Toppers. No one looking to get it in. Needs help. And it will stay with Charlotte. This defense, Macy Blevins. Davis off in the hands of Busick. Busick attempted just one shot. It was a made three, has seven rebounds to lead the way for the 49ers. They get it inside to Houston, but it was taken away. And Houston not happy. She's going to pick up a foul, which will lead to free throws at the other end. Houston just wasn't in position, ready to get that pass and go up with a shot. A little off balance for the 49ers. See, I think there's where Houston was upset. Felt like Foster had kind of grabbed her. Coach Consuegra was trying to make that case to referee Travis Jones. Levin's able to hit the free throw, her first point of the afternoon, and calmly sinks them both. The 5'10 sophomore averaging 4.8 points per game. And another turnover by the 49ers, up to 17. And the three-pointer won't fall. Offensive rebound, another three. Offensive rebound. You had two players on the floor there for Charlotte, one of which was J.C. Busick. And that one finally falls. Savori from beyond the arc. And it is now 19. Offensive rebounds for the Lady Toppers. And after a 9-0 run by Charlotte, we see a 10-0 run by Western Kentucky. Davis ends that run with that three-pointer and a timeout taken by Carrick and Suegra. And that is actually the first shot they've attempted since they had the 9-0 run. But five turnovers in the last 251. And that goes again to the inexperience uh, of, of this team for Charlotte having those turnovers. And now you just, it's those details, the turnovers, the offensive rebounds. As much as you're not wanting to give up the offensive rebound, you're not wanting to cough up the basketball. I mean, Charlotte could be in a completely different position 
not down by much at all against the Lady Toppers, but I feel like they're playing so much better, more complete of a game right now against Western Kentucky. And we heard Hannah come in with her report about what Coach Collins was saying to his team, that, that they really did have to pick it up. So you feel like Charlotte more complete, but it's the, the details of what we've talked about, all about the, the turnovers and the uh, rebounds that's happening here. See Davis, two threes here in this third quarter. She's got nine points overall, three of four from beyond the arc. Faustino going inside. Rebound Davis. And there's the pressure. They got a hand on it and knocked it out of bounds. And what's been tricky for this team, right, is of trying to find that identity and consistency. It was a, today has been all about the rebounds. Thursday, that's what Consuegra was really pleased with, was the defensive uh, performance and the rebounding of, of what this team did against Middle Tennessee. So you, you don't feel like this team has certainly played that complete game, and especially here in this losing streak right now, uh, it recently in Holton Arena. Go back to that game against FIU where Charlotte turned it over 29 times. He's obviously the blueprint kind of there of what teams are trying to do, and we've seen it repeatedly here in Halton Arena. Foul call. We really have because for Western Kentucky, look, this is an aggressive defense, but they're really aggressive out of that 2-3 defense, but they've got the full press against Charlotte, and they're making them pay with it. Lady Toppers averaging 11.9 steals per game. That leads Conference USA. Yeah. Ada McMillan, her first point of the afternoon. Only attempted one shot. That's four assists. McMillan able to hit both, became the 27th player in program history to reach 1,000 points. Did that back in December in a road game at Davidson. Final minute of this third quarter was the Lady Toppers by two after two quarters. It's been an adventure here in the third, to say the least. Maya yeah. McGraw got the rebound and a foul. Hold on, Foster, and that should lead to a one, two shots the other way. And for Jalen Foster, we see her attack the glass there to go up with a layup, but she doesn't finish. She then comes away with a, a foul. Um, she had a wide open shot right there at the free throw line. I think I would have taken that, that midway range jumper if I were her. So Maya McGraw, one of two at the line. And this is where, if you're Maya McGraw, we talked about having needing her to finish for the 49ers beneath the basket, right? Make your points here. Have an impact here at the free throw line, any chance you can get. So this third quarter been the corner of run so far as McGraw, one out of two at the line, ties it up. So it's a 6-0 run. We've seen a 9-0 run by Charlotte this quarter, now a 6-0 run. Lady Toppers with a 10-0 run. Sandwiched in between. He'll fire a three. Rebound Deja Lawrence as Blevins couldn't hit. Shot clock is off. Lawrence pushes the pace, though. Niners will get an offensive rebound, and Rembert able to draw the foul. First offensive rebound of the game for the 49ers, and it gives them an opportunity to grab the lead. And huge there for Rembert. Curious to push the pace there if you're Lawrence. As you mentioned, the shot clock was turned off. Now, this is a good offense when you get them out in transition for Charlotte, so I understand that. Rembert coming away at least with the rebound to give him a shot here at the free throw line, but we talked about reading the defense and setting things up for your offense. Rembert now up to nine points. And the Niners with a two-point lead as the Lady Toppers can get the final shot. Maybe shots if they miss the first one. <laughs> Austino finds Blevins. 
Long two. In and out. Rebound, Davis. And that takes us to the end of the third quarter. A back and forth quarter. That sees the Charlotte 49ers end it on an 8-0 run. And they lead going to the fourth by two. You're ready here for this fourth quarter. The Lady Toppers did everything right in the third, but struggled making shots. That was one of five field goals they made in the third quarter. They forced eight turnovers on the Charlotte 49ers in the offensive rebounding. Was impressive to say the least. And you look, third quarter stats. Get Charlotte outscored. The Lady Toppers by four in that quarter is that shot. Savori from beyond the arc gives the Lady Toppers the lead. But Charlotte only took seven shots in the third quarter. Did go seven of eight at the line. Lady Toppers took 25 attempts, making just five. So a weird game when you look at the numbers of how it's played out. A team that wears you down. And, and all of us. Yeah, right, right at the top of this quarter, two straight threes. So they had made just four out of 24 from beyond the arc. All of a sudden, back-to-back -back threes. Blevins, her first made triple of the game, and quickly a two-point deficit into a four-point lead for the Lady Toppers. Busick, little runner in the lane. Maya McGraw able to get it. Tried to save it back to Rembert. And it's going to be a foul on Rembert, her second foul. And Rembert seeming like she was going out of her way not to get that foul, but still tripping over that lady topper. And now lady topper is with five reserves on the floor, but team that goes deep and with their bench points, you're seeing it here to start this quarter, Busick. Big three in front of her own bench. That's the lead back to one. That's what J.C. Busick has been. That's what she has done for Charlotte here these last two games, whether it was Thursday night against Middle Tennessee and now against Western Kentucky, her second big three of the game. Galvin inside off the glass. You can't allow that to happen. This is a Western Kentucky team that's had a difficult time shooting the basketball, and Galvin just uh, getting it to go, finishing off the glass, almost making it look too easy down the lane. Bench points up to 21 now. Nice pass from Lawrence to McGraw, and the Niners answer right back. And we saw the, a lot of missed opportunities, where we've seen a lot of missed opportunities for Maya McGraw, and it even started with the opening possession for Charlotte. But key play there. And almost another key play, a near steal from Deja Lawrence. Galvin dumps it off. Nice assist. And the bucket by Betancourt. And a balanced attack we've seen from Western Kentucky to start off this fourth quarter. Four or two straight threes to start things off. And then you've seen them attacking the glass in other areas here these past couple of shots. Foul on the Lady Toppers. Watch Kentucky. Ten points here. Just the first three minutes of the fourth quarter. And that J.C. Music three was huge to ensure that things didn't get out of control. We saw a lot of runs in the third quarter, so we know both of these teams capable of that. I don't know if you even feel like things can really get out of control for either team at this point. Tough shot by Deja Lawrence. It's her in double figures now with 10 points. Meredith going inside, blocked by McGraw. Huge block there for McGraw. As we'd seen this uh, Hilltopper team drive inside to the basket their last couple of possessions, and Lawrence says, oh, I'll, I'll do the same here for the, my team. Lady Toppers trying to extend their five-game win streak. The 49ers just tapping it right into the grasp for Western Kentucky. Charlotte trying to snap a three-game skid. 
Faustino blocked again by McGraw. It will be Charlotte basketball. Referee first signaled Lady Toppers, but changed her mind. I think you see that is a right call as Lawrence will be taking it down court. Lawrence finds Davis. And get over the back on McGraw. Be her third foul. And I've said that previously in this game where you want to see Maya McGraw really get in there, box out. She's gotten called for a foul like that before, just the reach over the back. Foster open three, top of the key, off the glass. And now Jada McMillan, and a foul going to be picked up by Meredith, her second. Lady Toppers hitting their average of threes at 28 per game. They're just six of 28 today. That's 21%. To McMillan. And that's going to draw a foul nice try. on Foster. Be just her second. Clear that it does feel like since uh, her head coach, Carrick and Swiggers, told her to hey, be aggressive, play aggressive. She has turned it up that extra notch and played the entire first half. Right now, Maya McGraw with three fouls. Nobody else in the game has more. Busick wide open off the inbound. Perfect from that pair. JC Busick has had a really good game overall, but especially in the second half and even this fourth quarter, been key for the 49ers. 49ers made four out of their last five shots. Mead. It's the ball off. Runner in the lane is good. The Lady Toppers up by one. Gilvin able to make that shot and now a steal. Turnover 19. And a couple of turnovers that, that are uncharacteristic for Lawrence and it just goes back to hey you want to have this sense of urgency understand what's at stake just how close this game is but still controlling the basketball travel on need and it will take us to a media timeout 452 to go the lady toppers on top by one 452 to go Lady Toppers with the one point lead right now. It's the 30th meeting all time between the two sides. Series overall controlled by Western Kentucky. 22 wins compared to seven for the 49ers. Charlotte does lead it here in Charlotte, six to five. This is a Charlotte team who, if you look at the turnovers, has been a, a difference maker throughout the game, but even from first half to second half, uh, Western Kentucky had six turnovers in the first half. They now have just nine, whereas the Charlotte 49ers had nine turnovers in the first half. They have 19, so a drastic difference there in taking care of the basketball with 10 turnovers in the second half. Huge rebound by Busick. Miners working it around. Davis, pass was deflected. Now out Busick, eight to shoot. McMillan, now Busick for the lead. It's good! <laughs> that was all J.C. Busick there right at the buzzer, but she comes away with the offensive rebound, and you think, man, can Charlotte, or they got to do something here with that, that gift that J.C. Busick gave this offense, and right as the buzzer chimes or hits here in Halton Arena, J.C. Busick comes away with the huge three. 
Foster's three in the corner doesn't go. Davis tries the outlet. A little game of volleyball. And Kara Consuegra telling Davis and her team, no, slow down. And that is exactly what this team needs to do. The final three and a half minutes in this close game. Slow down and, and honestly even JC Busick there with that, that what we saw a turnover, yeah, from Charlotte, but right before that, I mean, her boxing out. It was Western Kentucky that didn't come away with an offensive rebound because of J.C. Busick. Faustino looking for help. Now it's Meredith. Savori on a spin pass, Lawrence, and it was blocked, but we're going to get a foul call. Deja can't believe it. And Kara Consuegra just silently staring. That's never a good thing if you're an official. The silence is deafening from Kara Consuegra. Oh, it was close. Free throw doesn't go. Lori, 68.6% at the stripe. It's one out of two, so the Niners lead by one. Yo, you know she can't guard you. She can't guard you. Niners are shooting 54% in this game. They look inside Lawrence. Feeds it back out, McMillan. She'll shoot the three, and it's good. Jada McMillan, only her 10th attempt from beyond the arc this season. And it gives them a four-point lead. Now Meredith will get an opportunity at the line. Gilvin able to get the pass inside. And for Jada McMillan, that was just her second shot attempt of the entire game, now giving her five points in today's contest. Another miss. They're 11 of 17 at the stripe. That one good by Meredith. Lori almost took it right out of the hands of Lauren. She needs help, and she'll call a timeout. And that, you, you were about to just shake your head if that ball was about to be taken out of the grass of Deja Lawrence, but a really good call timeout, obviously, to allow this team to reset after getting into some pressure, getting into some trouble against Western Kentucky. Charlotte 49ers. Be right back home here on Thursday. The Lady Toppers, meanwhile, will head back home to Bowling Green and get set for Thursday Saturday matchups with FIU and FAU. 49ers will make the return visit in the middle of February, February 16th. It'll be a 7:30 Eastern tip. And this is Conference USA basketball right here. And it shows you just how difficult, look, you're a long way to, to go from March. And obviously the goal is to be playing better basketball for any team, your best basketball for any team. But you've got a second place team here in Western Kentucky, five game winning streak. And Charlotte being that team, despite the questions, right? Despite the injuries, they're scrappy. They are going to be a difficult out. Another three for Davis. Her fourth of the game. A team, a young team that's getting better, more confident. And I think we've seen that confidence grow with this team throughout the game today. Take it away, and it leads to an easy lay-in from Meredith. And a 10-second call on Jada McMillan. Coach Consuegra can't believe it. And I don't blame her on that. Now the shot clock was down to 20. I wasn't looking at that. 
definitely seemed quicker. Yeah, that's than 10 seconds. And the, the coaches on the Charlotte sideline want them to check it. And I don't blame them. I mean, I, yeah. the score sheet has the steal that we saw happen with a minute 56. So that would obviously not be 10 seconds that transpired there. Again, your official, you keep your eye on that shot clock and see 20 seconds. Now, he was a lot quicker on the 20 seconds than the referees in the Bills Dolphins game <laughs> when the Dolphins were not snapping it. <laughs> when there were zero seconds on the play clock. And yet, they still almost beat the Bills. They did almost beat mm. the Bills. Referees here checking it out. It's Troy Winders and Carla Roberts Jeter checking it out. Coach Consuegra you feel like assuming she'll Charlotte's have the basketball. Ball. Yeah. Your shot clock operator, you're just kind of melting down beneath <laughs> the bass or table, making sure nobody sees you. The game clock should be right at a minute 48. And he'll bring the coaches together. And at first, it looked like Akira was getting the explanation. She just. I think, again, the assumption is that it's going to be Charlotte's basketball. And then they call her back a second time, like, hey, no, let's go over this. So we'll see it's decided here. It'll be Charlotte basketball. And six seconds went off the clock there. Each team kind of getting a breather. Niners with one timeout left. Lady Toppers with two. And a foul going to be called. You had a no-brainer call there against Western Kentucky, and that's just a play that you've got to be smarter about. They had one foul to give, so the next time we'll see Charlotte shooting free throws. You see the Niners with four fouls as well. J.C. Busick, 11 points today for Busick. Three of three from beyond the arc. Niners as a team, nine of 14, as it's been Busick and Davis. Making the shots from the outside. Lawrence going in. McGraw got it and scores. And a player we've talked about throughout the evening, throughout the day, hey, you've got to step up. You've got to adjust. Comes away with a big basket for the 49ers. As you see McGraw just come in, maybe the play of the game for the 49ers. Offensive rebounds have been heavily in favor of the Lady Toppers, but Charlotte has capitalized on their four offensive rebounds for seven points. Savori going in and gets the layup. Just under a minute to go, four-point game. Lady Topper is going to try to play defense. Charlotte's going to slow it down and hopefully not turn the ball over. Just about everyone touching the ball here for the 49ers. Now 10 to shoot. McMillan. Free throw line jumper, it's good! Timeout, Lady Toppers. Jada McMillan, the senior, has only attempted three shots today, two of them in the fourth, and she's hit them both, a three-pointer, and now this free throw line jumper. Those leaders we talk about stepping up, that number one leader is Jada McMillan. And she stepped up, showed this team how it's done here with a big three earlier in this fourth quarter and then with that jumper. One second on the shot clock. 
Pittman, and you feel like, Bobby, this turning point is when you had that lineup change, those four players for the Charlotte 49ers come in, and those four players not involving the names of Jada McMillan and Deja Lawrence. You had young players coming into this game, Ania Young, stepping up for Charlotte. Davis, obviously, she's been out there. Wade as well, Houston. Those players in that time frame really changed the trajectory and the momentum of this game for Charlotte. Gilvin to inbound the ball for the Lady Toppers. Savori, three. It's good. Much needed shot. And the Lady Toppers very much alive. Now they'll commit the foul. Savori picking up her third. The Charlotte defense has played so well. Fortunate to give up that three pointer so costly here with 24 seconds to go. Now making it a three point game. Yep. McMillan hits the first. Coach Collins telling his team right now, not going to take the timeout. Telling his team to go. Try to save that for maybe a one possession game type shot. McMillan hits them both. The officials thought he was actually going to take a timeout. And Collins like, no. Charlotte did make a substitution. Austino gets it up to Savori. Throws up a shot, but drew the contact. And I think Eric and Swagra just asking the officials, what are you supposed to do? What, what are we supposed to do here? How do you play defense today with that foul call? Yeah, it didn't look like much of anything on that one. The miss free throw. Hope today one of three at the line and make that one of four. And Consuegra, I think, is saying that she didn't call it. I'm going to say the foul, I think, before a Timeout was called. Oh, okay. I was just reading her body language <laughs> in her anger. Confusion on both sides here. Coach Collins, he's got his hands up. And now Deja Lawrence will go to the line for two. Charlotte 12 of 15 at the stripe. And Charlotte making their free throws. And if Charlotte comes away with the win, look, you talk about that moment in this game, which felt like a real turning point from the momentum standpoint for Charlotte and that decision for Eric Consuegra. But if Charlotte comes away, with a win today against Western Kentucky, you may look at this game in this moment as kind of that turning point of the season where we've mentioned throughout today's game, Karen Consuegra has told her team, we are so close. You got to keep buying in. You got to keep doing all the right things. Today shows the conference that it shows this team that th that is the case. <laughs> You're not just so close to these wins, right? You're so close and now you've done it. You you've beaten a, a very good team in the conference and hopefully you can use that. Again, you come away with today's win. You use that as momentum for the rest of the season. And it's nice, you've, you've mentioned Bobby in the middle of a three game homestand. The 49ers will return home or stay home Thursday night against Rice. 
Niners trying to snap the three game skid and end the five game winning streak for Western Kentucky. Any hope right now you would think a three pointer needed off this inbounds as Gilvin will inbound it. Gets it in the hands of Meredith. Slavori going inside, makes the layup. And timeout taken by Charlotte with 9.9 .9 seconds to go. And a great job there by Wade of playing defense, but not really because you don't want to have that foul in that moment. A full timeout. It's the last timeout for either side. Timeout. Can Swigger thought just moments ago they called for her, but <laughs> luckily that was a foul before any type of timeout. Look at Coach Collins, a Western Kentucky team that was picked to finish sixth in the uh, preseason poll. That was after finishing last season in fourth place in the East Division. Of course, no divisions this year, Conference USA. Now the Lady Toppers looking to meet or exceed expectations for the sixth time in the last seven seasons. Knowing you, the media, not quite sure what they're doing with the preseason <laughs> polls that are put out there. This year, they did have middle number one. I think and middle say has that backed was, that up, yes. That was an accurate mm -hmm. vote atop the standings. See Busick gets the basketball and she'll now head to the line with 8.7. Definitely two free throws would ice this game. And a player you're confident in at the free throw line. But Ian, I'll reiterate, especially after the performance that she's had today for the 49ers. A couple of key threes, I think a couple of key rebounds for Charlotte as well. 49ers making their free throws today. Now 14 out of 17, that's 82%. Shot 57% from the floor. Lady Toppers will see if they fire one up here, but have taken 31 more shots from the 49ers. Faustino's pass deflected. It's in the hands of Busick and the Charlotte 49ers in front of their home faithful in Halt Marina. Pick up the victory, 72 to 65. Contributions all around for the 49ers. They had five players in double figures. AC Busick led the way with 13. Deja Lawrence, Tamiya Davis each had 12. Maya McGraw, Deanna Rembert pouring in 10 points apiece in this victory. And uh, for the winning head coach, Kara Consuegra, get ready here to send it over right now to our own Hannah Brady. Hannah? Coach, neck and neck throughout the game down the stretch. How did you get it done tonight? Well, I think it just came down to our, our heart and our will. I mean, we didn't play well for a lot of this game, and a lot of that is credit to Western and how they play. Uh, we went with our second group. I thought they really changed the momentum, and then our starters got the message and did what we needed to do to win the game. All night you were telling your players that you wanted more from them and that you wanted them to play like they wanted to be here. Talk about your team's effort tonight. Yeah, it's just hard. We've been in a losing streak. You know, it's hard to stay positive through that, and it, I just feel like it was, it was holding us down. And again, we finally got the momentum to shift, and our kids played like they're supposed to play, and I'm proud of them. Talking about those three losses going into next week, how much of a confidence booster is this yeah we needed this I mean we we, we want to win at home um, I can't remember the last time we lost three in a row in conference play like we're a great program and we're just finding ourselves our kids are going to keep working thanks coach congratulations thank you Bobby Molly thank you Hannah you can tell her relieved to coach Carrick and Swagra as the 49ers pick up the win here at home for Hannah Brady Molly Cotton I'm Bobby Rosensky saying so long from Halton Arena where the final score is Charlotte 72 Western Kentucky 65 all games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app this has been a presentation of ESPN